Hello, welcome to my shop once again. In the past few days I've been preparing for a demonstration I'm going to do in about a month on coloring wood. And this is something I really haven't talked a lot about in my videos, but I do a lot of coloring and lacquer, spraying and buffing some of my pieces. I'll show you those in just a second. We'll talk about uh, coloring and colors. We'll talk a little bit about mixing colors and uh, what products I use for dyes and that sort of thing. So I'm going to get suited up with some rubber gloves and uh, I'll show you a couple pieces I've made with a lot of color. I'm showing you three pieces that I've done that I put quite a bit of color in. All three of these pieces are box elder, which grows around this part of the, the country, Wyoming and Montana and some of the western states. So. Uh, I'm going to show you the procedure I go through just briefly on um, getting this kind of effect on a piece. And I've been preparing for the demonstration and I've been um, sanding some pieces of box elder. And that's kind of what I start with. Here's a, here's a larger one. So let's take a look at color. Okay, what I'm showing you here is an app on my iPhone. It's called Color Wheel. And I'm sure if you have another kind of smartphone, you can probably find an app to look at colors and mix colors. This is such a cool app. I had to show it to you. Look at the primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, and mixing colors. Let's take a look at what this app will do. So if you're not sure how to get to a certain color, you can add one part red, one part yellow, and that's the color you get. We'll erase that. One part blue and red and purple, and that's one of my favorite colors to mix up. So this is pretty cool, and you can just kind of keep playing around with that. So I've got two parts red, one yellow, one blue, and you end up with <clears throat> kind of a brown. So there's a lot you can do with this. Really cool. Now I spent about 25 years refinishing furniture, and I wish I knew then what I know now about colors and mixing colors. There's all kinds of stuff on YouTube that's really, really good stuff from artists who know what they're doing. Uh, probably a whole lot better than what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you some of the products I use in staining wood or coloring wood. And one of the things I use is acrylic paint. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. Recently I saw a demonstration from a gentleman who said he never uses primary colors. He always starts with some mixture of colors, which I thought was a, a kind of a neat way to approach it. So all the colors you use are, are kind of unique. And I really like purple, so... Red and blue, a little purple. So let's put a little blue and some yellow together and we should get green and you can play with the amount you're putting in there to get a darker green or a lighter green and then finally let's do a little bit of red and some yellow. And I think that makes orange. Now I find that mixing dyes is a little more difficult than mixing acrylic paints. So let's take a look at some dyes that I use. What you see before you are color tone dyes I think they call them metal complex dyes, 
And uh, I also use aniline dyes. The color tone dyes come from the Stuart McDonald catalog. Uh, Stuart McDonald has a lot of supplies for uh, making guitars and finishing guitars. And I use their lacquers, I use their buffing system, and I also use their, their dyes. These are around $20 per bottle, but they'll mix up a couple quarts of dye. And I think the definition of a dye really is uh, the color is dissolved in the medium. Okay, this is some aniline dye that I get from Woodworkers Supply. And I've been using aniline dye for a good 20 years staining wood. And either the color tone that I just showed you or the aniline dyes can be mixed with a different kind of solvent depending on the finish you're using. So if you're using lacquer, shellac, an oil finish, you need to get, um, say, the aniline dye that's compatible with that particular solvent. And you can even mix some of these up with water. So you have to kind of pay attention to that. If you're using an oil, for example, you'd want to use one that can be mixed up with naphtha or paint thinner. And I, what I use with the color tone dyes is lacquer thinner because that's what I'm spraying. I'm spraying lacquer. Now again, I'm preparing for a demonstration I'm going to do at a wood turning symposium. I've never done this particular demonstration before. And if you look at one of my pieces, it takes uh, 15 hours or 20 hours to complete it from the beginning to the end. Well, I don't have that much time in a two hour demonstration. So I'm going to start with one piece that I'm not going to add any color to. And that will be the first one I start at the demonstration with. The second piece, I'm going to add green. This one I'm going to add blue. This one I'm going to add red. And this one I'm going to add yellow. And I'm going to just go from piece to piece, adding more color. So the first color I'm going to add, I'm going to actually add it to all, all these other pots. So number two, three, four, and five, I'm going to add green to. So let's start with a little green. What I've got here is just a little, little bottle with an eyedropper. So number one, I'm going to set that aside because I'm not adding any color to that. Now one thing I didn't mention is that when I color these, I'm going to start from the inside. And that, that is what gives you a very distinctive pattern on the outside as that color wicks through from the inside to the outside. So here we go with a little green, and I'm going to just take some color in my eyedropper, and I'm going to start around the rim with this. And one of the things that can happen is if you put your color in too fast, the wood will expand and it could crack. The other thing that will happen as you're applying your color is that it takes a little bit of time. I'm starting to get some color seeping through and usually that happens with your end grain. So there's our first color, and I'm going to let that sit. <clears throat> now keep in mind that I'm going to put three more colors into this particular little pot, and that will add a lot of uh, surface area that's going to be colored. So I'm going to shut the camera off, and I'm going to put green in the rest of the pieces. So I have pots two, three, four, and five colored with green. I'm going to go back to pot number two and put my blue in that. Now right now I'm putting the color in with a little eyedropper and you can pick up these bottles at uh, Hobby Lobby and those kind of uh, stores. I also put my color in with a hypodermic syringe and you can pick those up at uh, oh, animal supply places or 
like Shipton's and Billings is where I get some of these. And the needle you need is about a 16 gauge. It's a pretty big needle. Okay, you go to a pharmacy, they probably won't give you hypodermic syringes for some reason. So here we go with a little blue. I'll try to get that in a position where you can see it. Now what I like to do when I'm putting color in is waiting a little bit longer than I'm waiting right now. If I can go to the next day, that first color is, <clears throat> is pretty dry. And what happens is you get a little bit more distinct line between one color and the next color when you do that. Now I started this demonstration yesterday and I'm going to continue today, but as I was applying one of the colors, one of my pieces cracked. And uh, as I often say, you can't trust wood. Well, I don't know if you can see this. I'm trying to shine a light through there. there. There's a pretty good crack that's opened up in that. That's probably a good millimeter in thickness. Um, if this happens, this may close up. So let's continue with adding red to our pieces. Now to just briefly remember what I'm doing here is I'm actually preparing for a demonstration. So I'm getting my pieces ready that I'm going to show uh, a group of people at a wood training symposium. So these two pieces, this one has no color on it. This one has one color. I'm going to set those aside. So I'm going to go to these next three pieces and I'm going to put red in all three of those pieces. Set these aside. And hopefully we can see the red come through a little bit better. So far I've got green and blue on these and they really are quite dark and that's uh, something that can happen with your pieces. So you can actually mix up your dye to where it's really really dark and it just kind of comes out as uh, almost black. Now I've got quite a bit of dye in this and again I'm using red and I'm not really getting a lot of bleed through yet. I'm getting some on the very bottom of this uh, you will reach a point where the wood simply won't take any more color. And then what I do is I'll apply a final color from the outside and usually I'll use a very light brown or a yellow. Now every time I do this coloring process, I have to remind myself of the end product. Okay, they will look like this. <laughs> The, the pieces I'm going to show you will look like this. It makes such a big difference to get a nice shiny finish on there and that's probably got 15 coats of lacquer. So these two pieces I've got blue, green, and red and I'm getting to the point where I'm not going to put three or four coats of color on. I'm going to put maybe one or two and I've done some pieces like that. This is probably too much but this is a a demonstration piece and uh, just kind of showing how to apply the the dye so I'm gonna set this one aside this one's finished and later on I'll apply a yellow or an, or an amber finish to the entire outside which I'm gonna do right now to this piece so this piece will be finished when I show uh, the folks at the demonstration Now when I'm doing these colored pieces, I really don't like the clear white wood. And you're really better off to start with a wood that's very light, and sometimes uh, different turners will actually bleach this. So I'm taking some, some yellow dye in a little spray bottle. Now again, I would probably wait till the next day to do this, but let's just go ahead and see what happens.
and I'm just basically covering all the light colored areas that weren't stained before. And if you get a little bit on too much like I just did there, just take a paper towel. Um, now what's going to happen is the different colors are going to bleed a little bit, which offers you a different kind of a, um, effect on your piece. You can put the colors on and let each one dry completely, or you can put them on when they're a little bit wet and you get a little bit different uh, effect when you do that. So what I would do is I would let this piece dry completely and I'm in no great rush so maybe a week or two I go back and look at it. Um, some of these really dark areas I might try to sand those out just a little bit and get those lighter. But I would dry that, uh, do a little bit of finish sanding and it's ready for some lacquer. Thanks.